was saying uh, first to thank you for having me here. I think it's a, it's a very important and very prestigious uh, occasion and the World Bank is happy to be here. I've listened very carefully uh, to Professor former Minister's uh, intervention and uh, you know, I, I want to congratulate you, uh, Professor, because uh, what you've done is you spelled out the journey since independence very well, acknowledging uh, you know the positive uh, things that happened in Ghana, the great progress that the country has achieved. Ghana has been and remains today an example, a model of development for not just Africa but for the rest of the developing world. Uh, we've given a few examples on. GDP growth, per capita growth, even though, as you rightly said, you know, others, others have moved faster than you. But also, in areas like human capital, where Ghana has done extremely well, and it's currently one of the you know, top countries in Africa in, the, in that sphere. Also, when I look around, people ask me you know, about Ghana, and I tell them a lot of good things. You see, infrastructure is very good. You know, a lot of good things happening here. But as you said, uh, Professor, uh, today, we face, uh, I say we because I'm here, I'm Ghanaian, and I'm <laughs> with you. It's my country too. I mean, we, the country is in a very challenging situation, as you at least said, and other, inter, you know, uh, other uh, colleagues on the panel have acknowledged that. It's a very, you call it a crisis. Uh, <laughs> we can describe it in many ways. Uh, like Madam said also, you know, is it a, really serious situation. The numbers speak for themselves. The situation is very serious. Eh? And uh, at the World Bank, you know, we, we've not hidden the fact that when we discuss with uh, the minister, with uh, all the colleagues in finance, and in, you know, even with the head of state, that uh, the situation is very difficult right now. Ghana faces a very, faces a very tough uh, road ahead to restore Macro sustainability. Um, the debt, as you know, is close to 80% of GDP. Probably now, as we speak, might have even exceeded. Uh, the fiscal deficit, unfortunately, with COVID, has gone to a level that is uh, needs to be urgently brought back down. Inflation is in double digits. You said everything, Professor. So, uh, interesting discussions here about accepting whether there's a crisis or acknowledging or etc. I think, as you said, the members speak for themselves, one, but secondly, at least when we speak to the, to the finance minister, my vice president from Washington was here three, four weeks ago. Yeah, he, he, it is acknowledged. He acknowledges the severity of the situation. Yes, uh, COVID has, uh, has not helped, but you know, even before COVID, there were signs that uh, situations was getting a little bit uh, on the on the more challenging end. So the, the key thing is, uh, as you say first, to be transparent to the people, right? Because yes, the figures speak for themselves, but not everybody is as educated as we are. Not everybody understands what these numbers mean. So it's important to, to talk about it as we do today, but especially what is the solution. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about IMF or not IMF recently. I was asked in, a, in an interview. Um, my, my basic principle is at a starting point, no country should be the IMF, really, strictly speaking. Okay? Many countries in the world don't have IMF program, but they are performing very well. But the reality is uh, different countries need the IMF. That's why they were established in the first place, because, you know, it's by law of nature, some countries at one time or the other will face challenges. And that's why we have institutions like uh, IMF, the World Bank, who are here to come in in those difficult times. Today, yeah, there's a lot of debate I follow in Ghana. Some people think you should, some people think you should not. I think it's not right for me to comment on it, whether you should or should not. But like I said recently, there are advantages of uh, working with IMF in these circumstances, for instance, if Ghana really go, wants to go in an aggressive or very serious debt rescheduling uh, initiative now. It, it will help to have IMF on board because most creditors would ask you, what is the program underpinning 
this debt relief that will ensure that macroeconomic stability is restored. At the same time, you know, if government really takes strong enough measures to restore macro stability, then it, maybe it does need IMF, you know, I have to be careful because my IMF colleagues might think I'm undermining the <laughs> what they want to do. Like I said, it's it's one way or the other, but but, but to, 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 to sum up, just to say again that uh, the situation is serious and we at the World Bank, what are we doing? We are really supporting uh, the Ministry of Finance, uh, you know, government through ad ad advice on tax policies, there are options that we see also. But at the same time, we are here to advise. We do not want here to, to force hands. But you know, we, we, have, uh, we have also instruments like budget support that we can give to help update the Treasury situation. But all of this, provided there are strong enough reforms that will accompany this. And finally, just to say, we've talked a lot about, you've talked a lot today about uh, Fiscal issues, uh, tax, you know, tax issues, it's true that tax, tax GDP ratio at 12, 13% for virtually Ghana is not good enough. The norm for the region is around 20, and that's where the you know, sort of world will look at. But there are other challenges, like in the energy sector, that is causing so much problems for the budget. Today, as we speak, the annual deficit just for the energy sector going out of the budget is, is over a billion dollars. So it's a lot. And if nothing is done, there's a very good, very strong energy, energy reform program. You know, we are encouraged that, you know, the governments are really moving to, to implement it, but it should be accelerated because only this can save government at now $1 billion a year, or it can even avoid if things are not done in the next two, three years, it, go, it can go much higher than that. So congratulations, I'm very happy to be here with you. Thank you. If I could just ask two quick follow-up questions. Sure. Ghana is 65 years. Lots of the patriots here are wearing smokes and celebrating. They are saying we are independent politically, and yet we are not independent economically. They make the point that let's not go to the World Bank and IMF anymore. This government has sworn that is out of the IMF forever and for good. Based on your reading of the ground, is it a necessity now, unless we go the other alternatives that have been provided? Is it about time? Are we ripe for the IMF and other programs of the World Bank? You know, the, the right time is not about whether you go or not. The right time is what kind of reforms are you ready to do? Because even if you're ready to, if you want the IMF, but you don't want to do the required reforms to address the issues that you have, IMF will not come. Well, man, I just mentioned earlier, we have budget support on the table that we can, we're working with, talking to government. But when I go to my VP, my VP goes to the board to say, we want to give Ghana $200, $3 million budget support. They will ask, let me see the reform package that you come with. And here we are not talking about conditionality, the way people used to think about conditionalities. It's more about, uh, it's more about uh, how strong is your reforms to address the problem you have today. It's like you go to a doctor, you know. He'll tell you, man, you know, what I see here, you need that. But if you want to take something else, then fine, but don't come to me. So, yeah. Last, last question. You have an experience with the Francophone sub-region, the Anglophone sub-region. We all suffered COVID globally. Why should we be the only ones blaming COVID for everything? Look, as far as, as far as, sorry. Okay, we want to. But, but, but uh, to, to, say, to, to, to be fair to him, he has said that you need to recognize that there's a problem and that, that the problem is serious, okay? But if you, the patient, the facts are on the ground. And you say, well, my food isn't hurting. Well, <laughs> it's up to you, right? <laughs> like I said, uh, <laughs> Professor, at least when we discussed with, with Minister of, of Finance in the last two weeks, yeah. it's clear, it's acknowledged with us that, yes, I agree with you, the problem is serious. And this is, we've set up a team working with him now to try to come to, you know, arrangement on some sort of reform program, etc. But I think what is more important, which you talked about earlier, is the people of Ghana. The World Bank will know. I mean, the minister, is, even if he doesn't tell us he agrees, we know he agrees. He's an intelligent man. His teams are intelligent people. But it's the people of Ghana, really, that this conversation has to happen with. Because they are, they are stakeholders. You all are stakeholders. Your country, the budget is not 
you know, to me, to the minister, to the it's, it's your budget, it's your country. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. But just to quickly answer on COVID. Yes. At least we never said COVID was a problem. I was very clear earlier that even prior to COVID, there were signs that, uh, you know, the debt was already at 60 plus, already above what you would consider uh, moderate, moderate risk of the distress. But COVID has certainly exacerbated the situation. That, that's, that's a reality. But the, the answer is not, you know, that COVID did it. The answer is we have a problem today. We need to remind the deficit. The debt is very high. It's bordering non-sustainability and sustainability. So what other actions government will take, bold actions, to restore that sustainability, to allow resumption of sustainable growth? Thank you so much. Thank you. Please let's, yes, country director, Lord Bank. Thank you so much. Thank you.